morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folani. We're returning to a subject matter that we looked at um, last week, I believe it was. We're talking about electoral reforms and the challenges uh, therein. Uh, remember, we had um, Akwai Bomb Resident Electoral Commissioner Mikey Guinea um, uh, at the time. And we were talking about this same subject, uh, electoral reforms and the challenges. Well, we're continuing today and we have with us Mr. Harry Udo. Mr. Harry Udo is chair of Akwai Bomb Civil Society Organizations Forum. Thank you very much for coming on the program, Harry. Thanks for having me. Indeed, it's our pleasure. And also... Mr. Malaki Ugumadu is um, a former national president of CBHR. It goes almost without saying he's a legal practitioner. Sometimes, I mean, by New York, people's lawyer, again, it's not only one person that's people's lawyer. <laughs> yeah, you know, you haven't been in the trenches, the whole quest for democracy, and uh, it's ongoing. Thank you very much, as always, uh, for coming Pleasure. on, Malaki. Thank you for the opportunity. Indeed. Um, I would have thought and what do I know? That one of the most important tools for election in, our, in this neck of the woods of ours would be the card reader, the electronic card reader. Uh, because to me, that takes sentiment out. It takes emotion out of it. It's a very scientific tool. But it doesn't have, the electronic card reader doesn't have the force of law behind it. The result is that mm -hmm. There are allegations in, court, in some quarters that politicians, and by the way, Mikey Guinea had told us that day, his own personal opinion, that the political elite are at the back of frustrating um, quality service delivery when it comes to elections. The, the, as I was saying, there were, there, there's criticism in some quarters that um, they simply ignore the card reader and its potential and even the dangers if it had had the force of law because it doesn't. And they know in, in court it cannot be presented as evidence. So I'd like to start, my, uh, I'd like to start uh, Malaki, if I could, with just throwing the question to you. Why is there this foot dragging? Let me put it like that. Foot dragging, because I won't say they don't want to, you know, give you the force of law. Why do you think that there is foot dragging when it comes to empowering the whole system with this tool that INEC has introduced, and it is indeed their job and function to so do? Uh, I do believe that there are a couple of reasons for that. But the most obvious is that it seems that the political elites, hmm. I do not want to elevate them to a political class mm -hmm. because that will have clear implications, are contented with the electoral processes distorted as they are because it fits perfectly into their calculations. Uh, recall that um, we've had amendment of the electoral act in virtually every election cycle. Mm. Uh, recall also that the ways electoral report was discarded, not implemented. The Ken Namani. Uh, re 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 electoral reform was discarded. Even the electoral reform bill that came on stream shortly before the 2019 was uh, discarded. So the question would be why? Why mm -hmm. is a nation that had been so terribly buffeted, mm. why is this same nation you know, comfortable and contented with the practices that has uh, complicated our electoral processes. For me, I say that the, the political elite are comfortable with it. They know that uh, it fits perfectly into their calculations. Secondly, I also think that uh, there is not enough momentum built around the civil society and the political parties, uh, in that sense, 
I'm trying to charitably believe that some are interested in it, to drive the process to such an extent where the state will have no option other than uh, to do the needful. Do the needful. <coughs> um, but by and large, uh, it is still work in progress in the sense that the necessity, the benefits of these reforms and changes sought to be made with these efforts are almost inevitable. I mean, there are okay. things you mm. cannot mm. avoid in the final, in the, you know. Forever. You know, so um, <clears throat> I, I would think that there should be a corresponding effort on the part of the election management body, mm -hmm. on the part of the civil society, particularly those that are uh, primarily uh, constituted to pursue electoral development, electoral reforms and development. And there are quite a number of them, mm -hmm. from my friends, electoral reform, uh, to the situation room people and all of those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are quite a number of them now. We must be able to do it in such a way that if we, if, we, if we cease to try, we will be looking at the direct implications of continuing with what we are doing. But okay. let me make this final point. That uh, I think it's in section 53, I'm not very sure, 53. The law has also been left where it is. Uh, and, that is that, and that is that the use of the uh, electronic processes is not yet uh, part of the electoral process, in which case Whereas INEC could come up with uh, guidelines mm -hmm, and regulations, mm -hmm, and regulations and what the law will recognize as constituting the valid process of electioneering doesn't include them. Exactly. Uh, even in the United States, where uh, <laughs> in the in Iowa, it became a very chaotic situation because what came out was that as sophisticated and developed as the United States is. The device that was deployed for their voting process this time became a, a big problem for them. So, so much so that, that they couldn't even release, release the complete results. There's only a partial release. Of it. We'll, we'll come back to that. So there's no way where there are no problems. Um, okay, Harry, um, you are chair of Aquai Bomb Civil Society Organization Forum, and you've been, um, along with colleagues in other, you know. Um, civil society groups, you've been monitoring elections. Now I want to speak, since uh, you are from Aqua Ibom, and um, I, I, wanna, I want you to speak to some of the things we heard um, when last the wreck in Aqua Ibom was here. And I think the one that really takes the cake is where results were being announced, even as you said, the ballot booklet hmm. on torn was still in the possession of INEC. And uh, how can you have if votes <laughs> without that? Uh, first of all, I wanted to ask from you, is, is this something you also were aware of as a, as a player, as a, uh, over there? Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, before 2019, uh, elections in Aquavon State um, uh, was uh, something within the purview of the few. Uh, elites um, who had ways of getting the, the, the election materials uh, and uh, having election results sheets before the election day proper. And um, they wrote results. There were instances where people were still on the field before 2019, uh, still casting their votes or attempting so to do. Mm -hmm. um, results from that polling unit were being announced over the radio. Uh, these were things that happened. Uh, that is, and were, only were, INEC has the authority to announce but, results. But it would be INEC that was announcing this result at that time. And of course, the, 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 the INEC um, staffers were complicit in what was happening before uh, the, the coming of the current reg, Mike Guinea. Mm. Uh, okay, so you had people had the results. Sometimes what you found uh, at, at the... I, I saw result sheets for the first time in 2019, <laughs> having observed elections, you know, on a regular basis from 2011. 
all right, I saw result uh, sheets for the first time, how they looked like in 2019, all right? So you had polling units that people didn't even know about. You know, the, the man came and um, discovered 23 hidden polling units. Meaning that they were reportedly in the compounds of political players. In the compounds, in the bushes, in the backyards mm -hmm. of political players, unknown to the rest of society. And so they would take materials and they would take it there. The results that come from there is enough to uh, change uh, the equation at any time. You know, and he found this 23 uh, polling units yeah. and called the police and said, this is the, these are the three, 23 police I have found in some of your houses, in your backyards. Nobody said a thing about that, you know. And they, they, they couldn't, nobody could speak because it was true. Uh, and it was, it's published the 23 polling units. So he brought them out in the public domain. He ensured that materials, every day during the 29 election, before the materials would be deployed, he would put a call through to us. We were there, observers, international is, observers, okay. local observers, who we were there at the central bank where the materials were being deployed. Before now, what you had, uh, before 2019, what you had was a situation where uh, political leaders, political elites provided vehicles to convey these materials mm -hmm. to the various uh, ward centers, polling units, and all of that. This time around, INEC got their vehicles themselves, you know, and controlled where they went, and the vehicles were tracked. And we, we, we spent time at the central bank oversighting what was being done. Um, you, were, you, were, you were allowed to take pictures if you, if you would, and we did take a lot of pictures of all the materials for us in a civil society. But all of this only started from 2019. Until that time, you're saying to me as an observer, you hadn't even ever seen what a valor sheet looked like. I never knew what it looked like. What you would find, what, what, what the resource sheets were like, would you find photocopies, you know. Um, and, but the real thing was elsewhere. Even the ballot papers, it didn't get the right ones. The real ones were somewhere being tom printed. I walked into a, a, a polling unit and I saw security men sitting down with their belts losing with a bottle of drink in front of them, helping to tom print 2011, 2015. Uh, all right. So uh, is it, things it was, were as bad as it that. It was terrible. You know, this and, was 2015. This was 2015. And like, like, like um, uh, Malachi. Malachi just said, you know, the elites, and uh, they are the problem, um, you know, um, in this matter. Uh, they, they, they have the challenge. They, they want power desperately, not for the collective benefits of the people, but for their own parochial ends. And so what you find is that they, they exploit the system. Um, of course, that, like I said earlier, it wouldn't have happened without the complicity of, of the um, INEX staffers at the time, you know. When this man came, what he did, in his, in over, under his watch, a uh, administrative secretary was dropped, who was found to be partisan, uh, all right? A number of staff were sacked, who were found to be partisan. In fact, the recruitment process, because what they did, it was a carefully orchestrated thing, you know. Um, the recruitment of ad hoc staff were handled by the politicians. They selected people who would be ad hoc staff, and these guys obviously will be working for them. But what did he do? When he came, what did he do? He got the vice chancellor of the University of Uyo and the heads of offices of the uh, federal uh, uh, institutions in the state, give me your, the nominal role of your staff. And this staff, when they are coming, let them bring their employment later, their last promotion later, to, to affirm that they are actually persons of that institution. You, you understand? And so what then now happened was he was able to, to verify that these guys who came were from the universities. In fact, at some point, um, two dons mm -hmm. from the University of Uyo were recused from the process because after the, f the first election, the presidential election, now the next was going to be the governorship election, they went on radio, two radio stations actually, to, to advocate uh, that uh, it's a matter of right for the governor to be returned. You know, and uh, the matter got to the wreck, and uh, he, he invited them and put a call through to the one who informed him that look at what these guys are saying in front of the people. Say, say what you said again, and the person repeated the thing. Those two men were recused from the process.
Okay, um, I, I, just to tell you, uh, viewers, that um, we have to break off and go to Abuja, where the Nigeria Air Force is launching some aircraft. Uh, but we will continue with our international audience, and then later on at 4 a.m. when the repeat broadcast goes out, of course, both audiences, international and the DSTV audiences, can see the program. But we will continue the program. It's just that only the international audience will be seeing it and will be able to call in. But as I said, the repeat broadcast, both audiences at 4 a.m. tomorrow will see it. So, Yes, yeah, so I was saying that, that um, you know, he, he came and overhauled uh, the, the process. I, was, I said earlier... But what, what about the role of... And I, I just wanted to stay with this. The role of traditional rulers and... Um, because it's 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 all about society not disintegrating and um, what is your experience of how one the police if well you've told me about some people in police uniform belt loosened you know I just I didn't want to say policemen for sure <laughs> but people in police yeah, uniform yes, belt loosened mm, mm, you know uh, thumb printing, printing. Mm. but how about other spheres of Stakeholders. Influence, stakeholders, because what you're saying, it, it, it boggles the mind. Pulling units in private residences in the bush somewhere, was there no protest or were the people of Akwa Ibom saying, uh, leave it so, it is our elections, it's not anybody's election? You know, the issue of, um, there are other stakeholders, but what say do they have? You know how powerful um, the institution of government is, the governors are. And so the, bit, the traditional rulers, for instance, um, if you were to hold a contrary view, you, start, you stood the risk of being, you know, defrauded. Um, also, uh, thuggery was a key part of this. Um, you know, I, 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 you find thugs determining what happens at the election, um, selecting who would vote and who wouldn't vote. And if you voted a different party from the one they were standing for, you got beaten, your ballot paper thrown away. It happened uh, severally. Um, I mean, by Esther State, dogs were allowing certain kinds of police to pass through. They, they, they blocked them. They, they took I charge of the certain roads. kind of police. That's why I said people in people police in uniforms. Uniform. All right. Mm. So they, they, they stopped them, you know, people in police uniform. The dogs stopped them from having access to elect, electoral election venues. And, and th th this, is, this is what is happening. And, and some people give certain backing to those dogs. Yeah, you know, so... Because of that, before um, you know, uh, 2019, there was a great apathy among them. They never came out. People didn't believe in the process anymore. Once I went to my community to vote, all right, um, and I, 20, uh, 207 election, I went to my community and said, okay, let me vote this time. As I was stepping out of my house at, uh, in the community, the youths of the community were coming to my house. I said, okay, good, let's go and vote. Uh, they said they, they wanted to come and feast. And I said, let's go vote, and then we come back. They said, ah, don't worry, we've already voted for you. You voted for me? Now, uh, Malati, I, <laughs> I can see you shaking your head because it's, it's good that um, this is beyond analysts and commentators, someone who was there and someone uh, in the middle of it, in the thick of it, and who was a monitor. He still is an election monitor, and I, he was so at the time. And he's talking about Aqua Ibom specifically, but it begins to say to me that perhaps things like this were going on in other states around the country. You're really, you were reading my mind. First is to thank uh, the title you were thinking about, is Ob Obong. Obong. <laughs> My, my best friend is from Harry Udo. I in the, in, from I would have said a two okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I've been there myself. Okay. You see, I, I thank you for the very graphic, practical um, experiences that you've related. I, I'm from Delta State. You see, not in other parts of the country. In the Niger Delta, um, there were no proper elections until Absolutely. recently. Absolutely. I wasn't taken aback when he said it was in 2019 he saw mm, for, for the, the first time. time. Not that he participated, mm. he saw uh, election yeah, uh, material, uh, material. sheets, you know. Um, the, the factors that determined victory in the entire Niger Delta before now were very selected. But you, you need to be able to 
manipulate and ensure that those factors conspire and blended perfectly to gain victory. The question of slush fund. Yeah. Excessive violence. Mm. And of course, the big masquerade uh, factor. And the way the, the political elites. Correct. They must be called the elites. <laughs> the, the way they did this was to understand clearly the army of unemployed youths who were not just ready, but mm. prepared. Mm. To, and of course, that is what they understood. Could you be. hear him say that the youth said to him, don't bother, we voted for you mm. already. I, I had a lecturer, and I'm sure he will not be scandalized because he felt very, very bad about it. Uh, to mention name may not be necessary. But I had a lecturer in the law school who resigned and participated, again, closer, let me, in a do state house of rep election. The result of the election he participated in came out a week before the election. Please mark my word. The result <laughs> came out a week before the so-called election, and it was like that. Uh, when it, it was, was declared. What, what? What? I'm talking about 2011, 2015. Oh well, uh, law school was oh, 2002, oh, okay, so it should oh, okay. be Maybe 2011. Around, yes. About uh, mm, oh, yes. 2007. So he had to. He had to. He had to come back. Mm, 2007. Yeah. He had to come back to his so real day <laughs> job. <didn't laughs> you? So, what is the point? The point is that. Uh, and I absorb your story with some pride, talking about uh, my good friend, uh, Mike Higini. You know, and he has got a lot of bashes, which I'm privy to. Naturally. Um, but like I told him, you are inconsequential when you are not the subject of such attacks. Absolutely. Uh, you are of no moment when you exist and there are no, no air, no tension, nothing. Mm. Uh, the important thing is to come out of that situation justified and then satisfied that you have acted according to your conscience. In my view, he took on to the, not just the establishment, but the entrenched political forces in, uh, in Akwa Oh, he did. Don't forget, he was in the neighboring states, uh, Cross River, yeah. before he came there. Was it in Baeza or in Delta, my own Delta? A senior police officer was adopted. You we all read about it. Mm, Baeza. Taken on, adopted, and into the IG. I don't know how they resolved that. But he was taken away. Yeah. That is the level of violence that that is or that, that has always been prevalent in those areas. And so people are not particular about the manifesto that the political party has or the promises or the strategies of actualizing these promises. People are interested in where this law fund will come from, who is in charge of the distribution agency, and what constituency is eligible to have it. Those are the calculations. Now we're talking here about democracy and the route to it is election. election. And you have an umpire that is empowered by the law to do all that is necessary to make sure that they do a good job uh, and deliver a qualitative uh, 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 service. Now, it seems from what you gentlemen are saying that the very public on whose behalf these things are set up is complicit in frustrating it. Because if you have a situation where the society says, no, 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 this won't happen. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm just sorry for whoever is brand new mm -hmm. and has ideas and uh, wants to go and try his luck. He's a non-starter from a the non beginning. It's yeah, not so going to work if he doesn't no have the clique he belongs to. And no so so you, you can see what I'm saying. Yeah. How, how can you now say to our younger people, and God knows we need fresh blood, as in fresh legs in politics, but it doesn't look like fresh legs, so, so to speak, or <laughs> fresh <laughs> blood, is going to be welcomed. And this is, uh, people keep on saying electoral reform, electoral reform, and the, the, the authorities are not interested. Maybe, maybe I went too far in saying mm. they're not interested, but shall we say, 
Committed. Sometimes they say if it is, uh, they, 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 they're not as committed as they should, should be. be. We hear that the wheels of justice grind slowly. Mm. Perhaps the wheels of uh, reform mm. uh, also will have to grind slowly, even though it doesn't have anything to do with the law primarily. But it's a big problem that electoral bodies, electoral participants cannot use the card reader uh, because it doesn't have the force of law behind it. And it seems to me, I'm not saying it's exactly the silver bullet, but if that single one, if that were there and everybody knew that it's a good legal uh, instrument, then I imagine that most of these problems, if not all of them, would have been resolved. Would you agree with that? I, I, why did the card reader even come up? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You know, why, why was there the need for the card reader? Because of the um, for verification. pensions, yes, for, verification for the people to corrupt process. the electoral process. And so INET felt, you know, having <laughs> this thing that has like a biometric thing, you know, you get your thumbprint and it gets you on, you know, would be, would be key. So the card reader um, um, may not be useful if the, the political elites mm. understand and if the people in the country understand that the election process mm -hmm. is the process by which persons with capacity will be elected into office who will bring about you know a development you know for the common good the, the concept of someone bonum, bonum here you know of, of the people all right and well, so one moment please could i interrupt him forgive me for doing so okay but uh, mr george inikeja has called in our program mm. is a call in, in okay Lagos. great uh, good morning mr george and thank you for calling good morning uncle yari thank you for calling good morning good morning to malaki and the other guests yes good, good morning, morning. Uh, harry udo Okay, Yuri, this subject matter is not going to be an easy one for us to have credible elections unless we are able to take a drastic decision. What do I mean? The last time um, uh, Mike Guinea came on air there, I was suggesting to him that since elections are almost, I mean, violence in our elections are almost being legalized now. Yes, it's okay that there should be uh, you know, e-voting and that the card reader should be uh, revitalized. They should, uh, I mean, uh, make it legal, let the National Assembly uh, make laws sorry, so that we can, we, we can go electronic in voting. One thing I remember he said was that there is possibility of hacking. Yes, it is true. but. No, no, Uncle Yori, there is no system that is perfect. The people who do electronic voting that I know, what they do is they do it side by side with the manual voting. At least we can do that from the beginning. You can see what happened in, uh, in the U.S. Iowa. When, in Iowa. When the, the app failed, they resorted to counting the manual uh, you know, uh, uh, votes. It is only when issues come up in certain areas when you can there, there are checks in it. If we are afraid to try something, we will never get it. After all, the banks where we keep money, you can take you can have a bank account in Lagos and take your money by ATM in Maduguri. If that one has not been hacked, if we need a hack, it is minimal. If we try this one, we can still also get somewhere in it. But to be reticent to say, no, we can't try it because there are possibilities of failure, mm -hmm. that to me is not defendable. It doesn't align with the spirit of progress. Mm. I want um, um, and, uh, Malaki and his colleagues in the civil society to play a better role. Because they themselves, I'm sorry to say, have become politicized. Mm. <laughs> civil society is supposed to champion the cause of the people, not the cause of any persons or political parties. Mm. But what I am seeing these days, you call yourself civil society group, when you go deep, you discover that they are a formation of one politician mm. to champion that politician's cause. If we are to put pressure on INEC and those at least we, we believe are uh, obstacles to these uh, electoral challenges, the civil society must wake up and become genuine. Mm. 
Okay. That's my own uh, contribution. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. George, for calling in. I've got to rush off on a break now, but stay right there. We'll be back, and I'm sure Malaki and indeed uh, Mr. Haru Udo might have comments to That's react right. to. Uh, stay with us, please. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and um, thank you for joining us if you're just arriving and if you're seeing us at all. Uh, at this moment, it's going to be our international audience, I believe, as I explained before. We will continue with the program. Uh, both audiences, DSTV and um, international audiences, will be seeing the repeat at 4 a.m. tomorrow. But we're talking about um, the challenges of electoral reform, and um, it's against the backdrop of, quite frankly, stories that are true but sound more like fiction uh, that some of which we have heard here can you imagine pulling units in private residences pulling units in the bush uh the ballot uh, the ballot booklets mm -hmm. totally you know untouched yet results are coming in and then uh mr george one of our regulars um he called in to say look among all the other problems and challenges, even the civil society groups themselves, he fears some of them have been tainted and compromised. And that speaks directly. We were both of you gentlemen, anyhow, because uh, Harry is of the chair, is chair of Aqua Ibram Civil Society Organization Forum, and Malaki is a, a former national president of CDHR. So I imagine you would have felt that particular. I wanted to ask, how do you react to uh, Mr. George's uh, statement? Well, two quick statements. The issue of finding uh, uh, polling units or in, in, in private places, yeah. mm. um, it's not peculiar to mm -hmm. Akwaibom. Akwai Remember why uh, the late Adedibu was described as a garrison commander? Mm -hmm. It was uh, among so many other things, including the fact that uh, polling units were located right in his uh, Bodija residence. Uh, and so on and so forth. <laughs> now, coming back to George, I, I think George, uh, George is not too far from what we also hear. And when I say we, I'm referring to the traditional civil society organizations. Uh, the one that I led will become 30 years, uh, you know, 30 years in existence as of 2019. The only civil society body uh, that, w that was... Uh, in place before CDHR was CLO, which was formed in 1987. Mm -hmm. All of these had a focus to revive our <laughs> society beyond the elect electoral process. Exactly. So, uh, but by and large, you have found huge case of institutional failures. It is the absence of governance, the vacuum created by the inefficiency of governance that creates civil society. Where, for instance, civil society organizations will emerge to fill in the gaps that are otherwise unable to be filled by government institutions. They could come by way of environmental uh, campaigns, they could come by way of cultural uh, reforms and so on and so forth. So uh, I think that what is very important is that Mr. George and his ilks, I mean people who are a bit agitated about this, should not just sit back where they are. I didn't go to the university to study civil society. I am responding mm -hmm. to the urgency of today, Nigeria. Let me come back on this because I want to. I, I don't want to lose Prince, who has called in from the UK. Uh, good morning, Prince. Hello, good morning, Uncle, and your guest. Good morning, good morning. sir. Thank good you for morning. calling in. Um, thank you for your program. Is uh, I open up to everyone of us here, and um, it's one of the program that we can't wait to, <laughs> you know, to see going on on the air. Thank you. Um, what your uh, guests are saying next time, um, the problem we have uh, uh, in Nigeria is that we keep on doing the same thing the same way all the time. Let us do something different from what we are doing right now. We had an election here in UK on the 12th of December last year. Nobody was killed. Nobody went to court because 
the electoral system is independent. No one is appointing anyone to chair it. I tell you, I don't even know where we have polling booths here. I do my voting by posting. I go to work, post it two weeks even before the time, and my vote counts. But in Nigeria, you hear of killing. People are denied their mandate. The people vote don't count. It's from one court to another. You hear order from above and all sorts of things like that. Can we just sit down as Nigerians and think of a better way to get this thing done? Thank you very Boris much. Boris Johnson yes. don't know the don't know who is the chairman of INEC here. He mm -hmm. don't care to know. He mm -hmm. don't go to him. He don't give him any money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in Nigeria is where Ghana must go. Is talking, and we know all these things, but we turn our eyes the other way around. Look at what happened in Kogi. I have never seen where such a thing is done on earth. Up to today, no one has been arrested. A, a, a helicopter was seen in the air. That helicopter maybe was piloted by a ghost and all sorts of things like that. Can we be honest to ourselves? If the police want to deploy their men to look after people who are coming to vote, they should make sure they do the needful. And let us stop wasting life. If the INEC cannot do it, because the court now that is counting the votes. Exactly. No more INEC. Th thank you very much for calling in, Prince. I court really appreciate your call. I've, I've got to. I'm, thank you very much for calling in. Appreciate your call. Um, there's the other matter that George raised, calling in from Ikeja. That, well, the the insinuation was that there are. We, 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 Iguini said it first, and he's not the only one who said it. When I say, wait, I'm not saying he said it first, but he said it in our studio. And other people have also, you know, echoed that particular sentiment that the political class, the political elite, since you object to the class, uh, the political elite are behind the problems of delivering excellent service. Now, even the civil society groups that George highlighted, we hear that politicians themselves now, if that is possible, have civil society groups that are beholden to them. And before, before these people were supposed to be, you couldn't touch them, you couldn't reach them, they were neutral, they, they were unbiased, and they were, as much as INEC is the umpire. And by the way, Prince was saying that uh, uh, the electoral bodies over there are independent. We have independent in the name of our own now. Mm. It is independent mm. national electoral commission. Mm. That's not for nothing. Mm. But that point about Things have gotten so bad where politicians themselves now have, ha, I, it's even hard for me to put of it course, in a sentence, because, uh, have their own civil society organizations. <laughs> it, it stems from the, the desperation to, to grab onto power. And the, and the question for me always has been, if your desire to uh, uh, ascend political office is for the development of the Coward in the UK. Hold on a while so that he lands. If your 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 desire to uh, ascend uh, mm -hmm. to join is a matter of life or death. If it's to if it's to bring development to the people, why are you desperate about mm -hmm. it? Why don't why why don't you let yourself be voted in, be chosen by the people? The reason is, and that's why we have poor. Poor governance because they got in there not by the vote of the people mm -hmm. because they've wangled themselves there by one form of corruption or the other they are not answerable to the people and all of this it seems to me to be underlining the urgent dire almost indispensable need for electoral reforms absolutely if you absolutely. don't want to be guilty of what prince has if just said good doing the same thing the same way and wanting it to be different you'll be a bad man to do that so we want good if we want good governance we need to have these electoral reforms okay. i don't subscribe to um the electronic voting is talking about now perhaps nigeria isn't ripe for that yet okay. but the, the card reader uh, you know, is a good place to start. To start. To um, just that legal backing. Ka Kyle in the UK, good morning, sir, and thank you for holding on. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Thank you for calling in. So, I guess good morning. Yes. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Now, what I wanted to say 
for moving forward on our electoral reform is we need a third force of priority. This third force would be a civil organization third force. The objective will be not again in Nigeria to state court we decide who is elected. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Court again, is doing the work of INEC. The court will only do what they do in the past. Council elections where uh, my practices has been established and order a rerun. At least, if that is done, if we have that in place, all these candidates will stop running to the Supreme Court judgment and go and wait for them to be installed. The Supreme Court judgment over Imo election was a shambles and disgraceful, in my opinion. We can give the best explanation for it. We are number four, become number one. Yeah. There is no good explanation for that. Um, no. I, 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 I want to show the opinion of the previous caller that charged Mr. Prince. Mr. Malaki and our other charges. Okay. But not to hold you people accountable, but to charge you to the responsibility to consolidate your effort you've been making on Nigerian court. Because we too, we love Nigeria and we want Nigeria to get better. Mm -hmm. It's to mobilize public people. To, we need to go out for them to recognize the way January 6th was effective in 2011 or 12. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our cry will be not again okay. to pay court to decide who is elected. Thank you very but much for calling in, Kaode. Appreciate your call and also for your holding on. You didn't get a chance to weigh in on that. That whole matter about um, civil societies having been compromised. In fact, there's a sense in which you can say, how genuine are the civil societies that happen to be in the pocket of um, the political players? I, I thought I did that. And again, okay. civil Sorry. society, I, civil society oh, okay. is a generic term mm -hmm. referring uh -huh. to constituent bodies that yeah. have organized themselves around core issues of national Which is what Kaede is saying, uh, yeah. that the so people... I, I think, I think the, we should come back to what Kaede is saying. And, and again, it's fascinating that Nigerians have not completely lost hope. Because the fact that through your programs, you keep hearing people suggesting ways out of this uh, quagmire does uh, paint some picture of some possibilities if we get our ass together. We, we cannot run away from continuing to organize ourselves rather than agonize. We must find a way. Even in the face of the lethargy, uh, as it is seen by some of, of the authorities, to really galvanize Correct. this reform process. Correct. Now, freedom, they say, is never given free. Mm. Absolutely. The, the, the price of liberty is that eternal vigilance. It is the continued effort, sustainable effort, to walk the talk that will ultimately make the difference. The, the people you are organizing against are also mobilized and organized around mm. the core mm. benefit of mm. what they are getting. Mm. And so there should be a corresponding energy, in short, a renewed energy on the part of the victims of their own organization. So that is the way it is done all over the world, all over history. And therefore, what has become stumbling blocks in the process, as one who has been involved, is that we're getting day by day weaker as a society. The people you are looking at are at the survival instinct level. They are at the point where they pray that they can pay school fees in that mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are at the point where they will say, can I, be, can I just pay my house rent? There are people whose achievement, graduates, consist only in getting married. And that is the achievement for that year. At that point, you will begin to play down and moderate <laughs> on questions of national and, and, and that's how it, it becomes, becomes an existential problem. problem. And how that, do I survive? At that point, the politicians. That's where they get strength. To, that's where uh, they're moving. Uh, let, me, let me bring in uh, Ayodele in the UK. Good morning, Ayodele. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. I think this problem has to do with us as Nigerians. I can recall when I was treasurer of a, of a club in Lagos, I don't want to mention that club. I contested election, won the election, and members of that club, is a, 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 a social club, members of that club were asking me to come and buy beer for them. 
<laughs> they were asking me to do so many things just because I won election. That's and I told right. them I was going to serve you. So why should I buy you beer? Why should I buy you anything? You can take your you can take your position and go away. So this problem is a Nigerian thing. We have to find a way of solving it. Yeah, but we can't stop being Nigerian. Is the pro thank you very much. Right. If, if your suggestion is a Nigerian problem, we are Nigerians. But I, I don't know the extent to which we want to agree with that. That um, I, 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 can anything good come out of uh, you know Israel? Is it? Well, no, this, this is not how we are. This, this is, is not how we are. are. Uh -huh. This is not good how governance we are. Is not, it's not rocket science. You know, it takes the will of the people. Right. It but it also takes courage. It takes yes. courage. I'm saying it takes the will, it takes courage to, to, to bring about the change. If a, if that a is, practice that is or a culture has become repugnant and unproductive, you know? too, then you, you, you put a break to now it. Now, we have people like Mike again, and we don't want to over, over, over mention Mike again's name mm -hmm. because he's not the only one mm -hmm. uh, over in INEC there. Mm -hmm. There will be other people, perhaps, I don't know, perhaps those ones might not have as much access to um, the to, media, to, yeah. to, to media, but mm. I am suggesting that um, there are other individuals uh, in there. I, I just assume, uh, I just assume that that is the way to it will be, but maybe not enough for the critical mass that, that is needed that, to to to, to you. Pro propel thank the change you. that is needed, and and, and that's why that's why this conversation we are having is important because I was having a, uh, a phone call a conversation with someone before coming here, and I said, oh, I'm, I'm coming. To talk about elections in Akwaibom, and say, oh, why, what, why, what, what about uh -huh. Akwaibom? You've had smooth election in 2019. That's the model for other states to emulate. And I said, well, my fear now is Guinea is not going to be there um, in 2023. It would have to go uh, the specific timing that they have to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, my fear is the rollback of the gains mm -hmm. okay. that that, okay. It, that, okay. that 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 you know. So that, that's my fear. So you can't get complacent. So, yeah, you, you can't know. get complacent. You know, he just. T told you that the, the price for liberty is eternal vigilance. Yes. So we need to put this in the consciousness of mm, the people. Mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. need to keep talking about this. We need, you need, we need to keep shouting to ensure that the change we want, we get. Um, and for, for the political elite themselves that, uh, you know, that have been fingered, to hear that it's like the people are not going to be quiet. And the people are not going to give up. Yes. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Chidi in Kafanchan. Good morning, sir. Yes. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling. Good morning, Barista Ugumado. I can hear your voice. Good morning, my friend. Okay. That's all right. These yes, are these um, are loyal lo lo loyal viewers who, in spite of not being able to see the program, know the phone number <laughs> and are calling into yes, the program. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much for calling in. Yes, it's a good Thank you so very much, energy. Uncle Yari. In fact, I my take over the discussion going on in the studios right now is it, quite pertinent for Nigeria as a country that is practicing democracy to entertain electoral reform. This reform is very, very incumbent, given the amount of brigandage that goes with electoral process. In fact, if the elections that we had last year is not something to go by as far as um, democratic elections are concerned, mm -hmm. So in my own view, I would suggest that a more pragmatic effort must be made to ensure that our votes count as Nigerians. Where our votes cannot count as Nigerians, it means that we are doing any other thing but democratic practice. Thank you, and God bless all of you. Indeed. Thank you very much for calling in, uh, Chidi, under the circumstances I described. I have three suggestions to Please. Me. Um, we, we must go back in addition to our resolve to get this, uh, this process working. We, we must re, re tweak the legal regime. Okay. The, the law as it stands now um, is not very favorable to the kind of reforms that will bring about legitimacy mm. in our electoral processes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What we have so far has always been the validity of our elections. Mm -hmm. The legitimacy of it we derive from the participation of the people. And the participation is not about uh, people, it is about making their votes count. 
and reducing the incidence of judicialization of our elections, exactly. which is where we are now. Exactly. Secondly, what do we do with the punishment system? How do we penalize? How do we penalize? What are the consequences if would appear of there are no electoral serious offenses. offenses for electoral offenders? I have shorted myself house <coughs> of me. Section 150 of the Electoral Act 2010 that gives INEC the power to prosecute electoral offenses. If their challenge is funding, logistics, personnel, mm -hmm. we have made suggestions, okay. including partnering with the professional uh, legal professions to deal with the manpower to provide these electoral offenses. Except we do that, mm -hmm. we're encouraging the impunity that is going on, on now. Mm -hmm. Finally, no, no. what is the reward system? To what extent are we singling out some of the people who are making huge sacrifices in these processes okay. and stand them out mm, as yeah. exemplary figures? Mm. Mike Higgini did not fall from heaven. Mm -hmm. He was a student union leader at Unibank. Mm. If we had been in the civil society, we were neck deep in the struggle for the restoration of democracy. So he knows precisely and can relate with the the effort that was made Indeed. to bring about democracy uh, in our system. Let me quickly bring in uh, Mazi Okoroa for uh, yes. under the same circumstances that um, you know uh, uh, the, our friend from Kafantian called in. Good morning, Mazi Okoroa for. Thank you very much for calling good in. Good morning, Tayori. Good morning, our guest. Good, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, but you see, it, it, what we are having now today is that we are good policy formulators. When we come to implementation, it's 50 50. Every formulation. We have in Nigeria, there was the committee A, B, C, D, K, Z. At the end of the day, we are not coming at that. Actually, you have what the uh, Secretary of State, USA, said. He <laughs> said Nigeria refuses to do what? To grow. On the line, that then it refuses to grow. Now, you ask that, say, what happened to the implementation of electoral law? If we are to vote forward, at least, we want to grow, like what the Secretary of State said. Let us implement it. What does it take? Everything is there in the cooler. Very sad, honest, but very kind, honestly speaking, the manpower is there. We have excess. Mm. But the question is that the very people are not given the opportunity. Now you ask yourself, why must you bring a vice chancellor to come and be the attorney officer? Does it mean and they cannot employ people in their office permanently so that they will come into the shop that you are as a little officer? Because when this happen, we hold them responsible. So all these issues of crime, crime, crime is will not solve our problem. Let us call the spirit. We saw what happened in American impeachment. At the end of the day, uh, thank God for President Trump. He came through. <laughs> you saw the sequences they followed. Yes. Did you see anybody coming to talk about religion or private statement? And even when Madam uh, uh, the Speaker of the House, she thought the paper she, she expressed her own annoyance and what you expected. It didn't happen. Talking but about like Nancy Pelosi. We're doing it underground, underground, underground. Create you more problems. But this one, woman exposed her own. Folks are playing that he doesn't like what happened. So what do we do? Like, yeah, we have to think positively. The young, even the children, you know, they are talking now. Can't we go and use them? Every day we say, call member, call member. They, they will look for them when they wait. Yeah. Ma Mazi, we've, we've run out of time. Honestly, we've run out of them. time. Thank you very, very much for calling in, Mazi, especially under the circumstances that I, I, I described. Mm -hmm. We've completely run out of time. But again, it, it goes back to what you two gentlemen have been saying. We have to be eternally vig vigilant. Yeah. And we have to keep on at this particular, you know, post. Uh, which I think Nigerians are. I like the way my, my you know, Malaki phrased it. I didn't go to the university to, to, to study all Civil of this. It. It's, it's my personal engagement, <laughs> and that I think is what all Nigerians, young and old, are called upon to do. We've completely run out of time, but I want to thank you also, um, Mr. Harry Uda, uh, coming in. Oh, boom. <laughs> <It's a bomb. laughs> coming in all the way from uh, Akwai Bomb. Thank you very much for coming and Thank for you. sharing your perspective and Thank indeed you. for Thank showing you. us that there still is hope. Yeah. We mustn't give up. No, no, uh, and also thank you, Mr. Malaki Ugudo, uh, uh, Ugumadu, mm -hmm. as always, former president of uh, CDHR, uh, you. for you know, continual, continually keeping the beacon right up there, I'm showing grateful. that it's not an impossible situation. Thank you very, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. And so thank that's you. our program. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. And uh, as I explained it, all our audiences, the international audience, the whole DSTV audience can all see the repeat broadcast at 4 a.m. tomorrow morning. Join us tomorrow for a fresh edition at half 10 in the morning. I'm Yori Folani. Bye-bye for now.